today we are going to do something a little bit different. We are going to look at a thing of beauty and historic importance. Nice cup of PG tips. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have a look at this thing. Inside here resides a 8mm vintage camera built in 1970. We know that it was built in 1970 because we have good evidence and we'll show you that in a moment. But first of all, it comes in this lovely attractive black, I think it's leather case with a nice leather strap there. Big long leather strap. Um, real good quality and uh, as you see when I open it, it is real good quality because even on the inside the quality is wonderful. Look at that. Nice deep green coloured velvet. I'll show you inside there in a bit. I'm going to show you this part first. This here is the main camera. I haven't told the case because it'll flip backwards else. Is the main camera. I shall put that to one side for the new. It has a pistol grip. We shall put that to the side and we shall assemble that in a few moments. This thing uh, was found by my sister-in-law at market and it comes with absolutely everything. If I take this bit out of here, put that down there, put the case, well, let's have a look at the case first. You can see in there, a bit dirty at the bottom, there's even a winding handle. And in the top, behind this little clasp here, are loads of filters. These, take one out, still seemingly in their original paper. The paper's deteriorated all the years, but still doing the job. And these are the filters that came with it, full set. There we go. There we go. Right, let's put that back in there. Back it back in there. Whoever had this took a hell of a lot of pride in it. Here's a little release pistol thing. We're doing remote operation of the camera. Take that out because we'll set that up in a bit as well. And that clasps there. And put that to one side. Now, here is documentation that comes in the case. And as you can see, there's a lot. First of all, it came with a brush, a sun filter, a little bit dirty, but yep, that goes on the front of the camera, like so, to protect the lens from, basically, to protect the lens from J.J. Abrams, otherwise known as lens flares. There we go, you come with that. And all this documentation, let's have a look at this once at a time. We have... Uh, notice for your protection and the contents of this package have been insured with the Parcels and General Assurance Association Limited. Okay. Insurance certs, it's also been posted to them. Course Zoom Course 5, you get that the 2 times uh, natural density filter for the lens is not supplies with this outfit. You mean buggers. Uh, quality control card, checked by such and such, 1970. Uh, take up footage counter, shutter synchronization, motor operation. There we go. Quartz 5. Seal number, I assume. Uh, this product is guaranteed against de defects due to faulty material and workmanship. For 12 months. I think it's a bit expired. Uh, it comes with. This little list. Uh, a list. Of stuff that comes in the set. Sunshade, cable release, which is that one. Pistol grip, yes, check. Protective wrist strap, not seen that. Adapter screw, rewind, crank, oh, that's what that's for then. Bit screwed if you didn't know that really, I suppose. Uh, brush, I wonder if that's the original brush. Could be. And cap for lens, no that's gone. Cap for exposure meter, gone. 
bag with shoulder carrying strap, yes, packing box, no, supplementary lenses, lens filters, light filters, and the camera. Yeah, I think that's it. And checked 1970. This is Russian because these are Russian cameras. Oh, didn't check that one. Oh no. No, it is in the Russian one. So it's obviously checked in Russian and then posted across to the owner. So I wonder if it's a catalogue page or something. Okay, this one has... Uh, this is the receipt. So it's got the original owner's address on. So I'll cover that up. Yeah, there you go. Green's mail order, 161 Kensington High Street, London. Telephone, do do do. 24 hour answering service. And he paid £30, 10p. Uh, on the 6th of the 11th, 1970. So basically, we're com uh, the point of filming this, we're coming up to this thing's 45th birthday. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Important, please remember to keep the box and all accessories, including lens cap, instruction book, and guarantee card. We reserve the right to with withhold a full refund of money if any items are found missing. 45 years and all this has survived. Amazing. Correction to instruction book, page 7. And make sure the film is looped around the lower rubber guide roller. Rubber. I hate rubber and old equipment. And you get a lovely, 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 lovely instruction book. For the course 5. Amateur Cine Camera. Giving all the technical details. Diagrams. Set it all up. Just a shame it's not flat because it's a bugger. Lens aperture setting. Viewing. Image focusing. Filming. Reversing the film. All sorts of stuff. All sorts of interesting stuff which I've had to read again before doing this review so I can remember what this thing is. Right, so onto the camera itself. And it is quite a side, quite a considerable weight. And this is the pistol grip. It has the trigger on it. And it looks like I oh know that's for this, isn't it? Yes. Right. Right, put fit the pistol grip which just screws in to the bottom here. go and you've got this big bloody camera push the zoom back a bit there we go big bloody camera weighs quite a bit that nice uh, now this can go in the bottom here I think maybe not I forgot where this goes this must take the place of the trigger hang on Ah yes, this would go onto there. Yes, then you can have remote start. Cool, eh? Right. So if I put the trigger back on, let me show you how this baby works. Now, this is 1970. Eight millimeter. There are no batteries powering this. This is pure clockwork. You can wind this thing up using this big man size lever and it does take quite a bit of effort. One turn. Ah! Oh wait, it's in the wrong mode. One turn is four seconds. So let's see what we're going for in total. This is at 16 frames a second. Let's see. Just wound up. Come on. There we go. Right, let's see. Rough count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 
17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, yeah, so about 30, 35 seconds fully wound up. And you'll notice as it's doing that, this thing was turning. What this is, is it tells you how much film you actually have. Um, so it starts at 75, sorry, 7.5 meters or 25 feet. And as you, you're filming, this ticks around and uh, tell you how much you've got left. Uh, here you've got, I'll just wind this up a little bit. Here you've got different modes. There's NR, I have no idea what the words mean. Or continuous, which just runs it continuously without you having to press the trigger, which is very handy if you want to be in the shot yourself. And you'll also get S. Yeah, there you go. Single shot. So, for some strange reason, you want to do one single shot. There you go. This is your film speed. Uh, she is capable of filming at 16. Just wind it up a little bit. It's capable of filming at many different speeds. So, there is the. Let's put this on normal. There's a, there's, a, there's a 16 frames a second, then there's the 32 frames a second, which is double the speed, obviously. 2 times 16 is 32. There you go. And if you want to be a real mad bugger, 48, which is 3 times the speed. Obviously. <laughs> you aren't going to be able to film for as long and that's going to cost you a fortune because I've worked out uh, looking on the internet if I was to use this with a film it costs about 40, 42 quid for three and a half minutes of film yeah it's not exactly a cost effective solution this here is used for when you're reversing the film this, it switches off the claw lever which is the lever that pulls the film forward that's deactivated so you can rewind the film. This is to remind you of your film speed, you know, like sensitivity of your film. Let's put these back to normal. Before I go anywhere else. On the front, you'll have a light sensor with a gauge there for different settings. This uh, controls the aperture automatically, depending on how much light's falling on there. You've got your focusing and your zoom. It does zoom quite a distance in. I shall try and get a shot through the eyepiece and uh, I'll try that now. I'll try and get a shot through the eyepiece and you can see what it's like. It is quite dark so I'll be right back. No, I did try but unfortunately due to the size of the tiny little viewfinder in there and the darkness, nothing really happening so pointless. But it is. Uh, your yeah, optics are perfect, you get lovely focus on it, and it has got quite a powerful zoom. Now, on this side, you have two functions. Uh, this is the rewind lever, so you put this in here. And you can rewind your film. And this one opens up, so you can put the film in. And that's what it connects up to, see? There we go. So that's why it went that way, because it feeds weirdly. So this is your uh, your spool, which goes on there. The film then gets wrapped around here. Uh, I'm not sure if you can remove this. Yes, you can. Just remembered. <laughs> there you go. It then goes <coughs> over this, through the aperture here where the light comes in, around this bottom one and onto a spool which would have been here and then you can 
replace this. There you go. I've never loaded it obviously, but I imagine you uh, load it with that on. Not in the amateurish way that I was doing it there. So if I put this back on. Yep, and it goes on one way by the looks of it. Clever design. Hang on. Should go that way. Don't think it wants to. Just like to go that way. Okay, goes that way. So there you go. And obviously you can take this sun filter off and uh, put your different filters on that came in the case and film away. And yep, so no sound on this. Uh, this is pure metal, it's bloody heavy. And it survived 45 years and it's still working tickety boo. Need in the USSR. Who's looking at you, baby? Yeah, as I said, I'm not going to do any filming with this because it's uh, very expensive to film with. So it has to sit there looking pretty on the shelf. There you go. So that's the Aquos 5 8mm cine film camera from 1970. If you've got any questions or comments about this or your own experiences of these, then uh, please let me know. Or if you've got any film taken with these, uh, send us a link. Let us know. If you want to see any more nutty reviews, videos like this, or retro gaming, then subscribe. And please like the video if you like it. If you don't, uh, uh, and my social media is in the description box below. So apart from that, thank you very much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy.